Oh my God, what is this? It's unbelievable. Then the doctor took Mrs. Olivia's file and started looking at it, reviewing her test results. This is unbelievable. Is there a problem, doctor? As I told you, madam, you need to terminate this pregnancy because the fetus is deformed. I have waited for several years to conceive this pregnancy. I will never terminate it. And what do you mean by deformed? The size of the baby's head is large, and you should terminate it now. In the fourth month, the size of the fetus is small. Abort it before it grows further. What will happen if I don't? It may be born, but it won't live long, and we might lose you during childbirth. Olivia stood up, saying, I will never give up on my pregnancy. Besides, these devices often make mistakes. Olivia left the hospital determined to keep the fetus. Months passed, and the due date approached. Olivia sat with her husband, Martin, having lunch. Do you like the name? Yes, I liked it. We will name him John. I will do everything in my power to ensure my child lives. And I will be by your side. Martin finished his meal and went to his room while Olivia washed the dishes. Suddenly, labor pains started. Martin rushed his wife to hospital. They took her into the delivery room while he waited, his nerves on edge, afraid of losing his wife or the child they had longed to have for years. The doctor came out and approached Martin. Sir, you need to sign some paperwork. We'll have to perform a caesarean section. Martin signed the papers, and within half an hour, the doctor came out again saying, Congratulations on the new baby. Are they both okay? Your wife is fine, but your son is in intensive care. They're supporting him with oxygen. Martin comforts his wife in the hospital, and they are waiting for their newborn to recover. After two days, John's health improved. So they took him and went back home. Although John's health was good, his head was gradually growing bigger. Despite his parents' care, the community had a different opinion. He was subjected to bullying and mockery because of his enlarged head. Come on, Big Head's dad. Why don't you play with us? John approached to take the ball, but the boy threw it to his friend. Unfortunately, you can't play. The rules say that a player can only have one ball, and if you take the ball, you'll have two. One of them is this one, and the other is your Big Head. The children laughed, but John was hurt by their words. John would tell his mother that his head hurt. She would hug him and say, don't pay attention to the words of the little ones. Your head is beautiful, and it demonstrates your intelligence and brilliance. But I really feel a headache in my head. Then rest in your bed for a while. John's problem wasn't limited to playing. His head continued to grow rapidly, even after he entered school, the other students would laugh and make fun of him and his head. His spirits were crushed. He often resorted to crying and suffered from constant headaches. John remained in this state until he turned 13. One day, John left school and found his father, Martin, waiting for him. He took him home in the car. On the way, he told his father, My head is hurting me a lot, and the medicine doesn't help anymore. All right, let's not go home then. Let's go directly to the doctor. Martin called his wife and informed her that he would be late. At the doctor's office, John and his father sat, and the doctor looked at them. Then he called the nurse and asked her to take John out. After they left, he said to Martin, Your son's head is growing rapidly, and it's putting pressure on his nerves, causing him great pain but we're afraid he might have internal bleeding. What can I do for him? Nothing. Well, there is something, but I don't think it's a suitable idea. Tell me about it. I will decide whether it's appropriate or not. There is a clinic specialized in head and nerve diseases. Its owner, Dr. Smith, conducted a comprehensive study on this subject. He needs volunteers, but the result remains uncertain. At that moment, Martin became angry and said, my son is not a lab rat. Meanwhile, their son was listening to their conversation by the door without them noticing and started crying out of fear of what would happen to him. When they returned home, his mother asked him, What happened, John? What's wrong with your father being so angry? I don't know. 
The next day, John had a severe headache and started screaming in pain. His parents rushed to his room. Martin embraced him and cried, saying, Don't worry, my son. I will find a solution for you, even if it means spending my life traveling between countries searching for a doctor. In that moment, John remembered what he had heard from the doctor and said to his father, If you're going to do anything for me, give Dr. Smith a chance to treat me. I want that. Surprised, his father asked, How do you know about Dr. Smith? I heard the doctor talking to you. Martin explained to his wife what the doctor had said. They tried to convince John that it was just an experiment, but he told them, I'm in pain. I will die anyway. And maybe these human experiments can benefit others because of me. They boy convinced his parents and reached an agreement with the private clinic. On the day of the operation, the press gathered at the clinic's door. It was the first of its kind in their country and even in the whole world. Martin and Olivia were very worried about their son's fate and they were annoyed by the presence of journalists who kept asking them questions. Several hours passed, and everyone was on edge, waiting for the result. His parents, the journalists, the medical staff, and all the families who were waiting for the result on television. Finally, Dr. Smith came out and approached Martin and Olivia. Congratulations. The operation was successful. His head will no longer grow, and he won't feel any more headaches. He's sleeping now due to the anesthesia, but he will wake up soon. John returned to his previous life with his family, but this time in good health and his oversized head completely stopped growing. Weeks passed after the incident, and John's story spread throughout the country after the clinic's remarkable success. Dr. Smith and John were invited to appear on television. Who should we credit for your success, doctor? We conducted extensive research and theoretical studies thanks to our experts. However, thanks to John, we were able to put our theories to the test. Otherwise, they would have remained ink on paper. He was willing to sacrifice his life to benefit the world, and we are very grateful to him. John started crying. Why are you crying? I'm not used to being loved or appreciated by anyone other than my parents. I have endured mockery and bullying all my life from other children. They never considered my feelings or the tears I shed every day on my pillow because I'm not like my friends. John spoke about all the harassment and bullying he experienced. Everyone heard his words and was moved by them. When the session ended and he left the studio, he found many people there who welcomed him and gave him flowers and gifts. Since that day, his neighbors and schoolmates started treating him differently, and they began including him in everything like any other child. Thank you all for following my story, and I hope to see you again in the next adventure. Goodbye!